Men were enthusiastic to join up and relished the chance to get at the Germans. The 1st to 4th battalions were the regular soldiers who were called up as soon as war broke out. Then, after the regulars came the reservists, consisting of the 5th and 6th battalions. The volunteer battalions consisting of entire villages which joined up at the same time. These then formed Powell's battalions, but were also known for which job they performed in civilian life, for example public school students and stockbrokers. These men would travel to the trenches together, eat, fight and sleep alongside each other, forming a strong bond with each other. Their advantages and disadvantages to this. The advantage was supposed to be that each man would fight harder and better if he knew and trusted the man either side of him, as he would have known him his whole life. The disadvantage being if you would see your best friend killed or wounded in battle, it could leave a permanent mark on your memory or mind. This would then leave some soldiers mentally disturbed for the rest of their lives. Sadly, as the war progressed, many men would see friends and loved ones killed or wounded in the trenches. The 1st Battalion suffered extreme loss throughout the entire war. By the end of the first year of the war, it had replaced its battalion twice over due to the amount of casualties it had sustained during the fighting. H.C. O'Neill writes in the Royal Fusiliers at War how the 1st Battalion suffered in one daylight patrol. A daylight patrol on the 27th resulted in 17 OR other ranks being killed and 12 wounded. This was just one example of how many other incidents that would happen to the 1st Battalion during the course of the war. Living standards for the soldiers during the Great War were very often appalling. The trenches that the soldiers had fought in were dug six foot deep and were four foot wide. In many situations, the trenches were filled with water from the bad weather. The soldiers spent long periods of time in the water. This caused the feet to mould and get affected by the bacteria that lived there. This is more commonly known as trench foot. For the 1st Battalion, medication for this disease was not available, as the cases were never reported. However, they did receive a special kind of treatment. Murray Victor Burrow Hill, a soldier from the 1st Battalion that had survived the war, describes the experience of the trenches and his encounter with trench foot. We had a very murky time at the Hooge, where the trenches, for no apparent reason, were subjected to most violent bombardment. The 3rd Royal Battalion suffered this and we relieved them in the trenches, which were more like porridges than anything else. The brigade afterwards came and thanked the battalion on the battalion parade. In the winter 1915 to 1916, there was a campaign waged against trench feet. All cases had to be sent to CCS and report to the brigade. Our medical officer did nothing of the sort. He made his cases, put the feet into a bucket of snow, and when that was not available, into the cold water he could find. After this ordeal, the feet were rubbed as hard as they can, and the cure seemed to be perfected. Leaving for war with friends helped boost the soldiers' morale, but it was easy to lose hope in the trenches. Most of the soldiers adapted this idea of surviving the war with a smile. They brought with them their sense of humour and celebration. Sergeant Whedon of the 1st Battalion wrote a narrative after he returned from war that included many anecdotes from his time there. It may have been pancake day, I can't remember, but we got to a bet of two sixths who could toss the pancakes and three of us were to toss it once and the onlookers decide the result. We all tossed, but Gallagher and I had forgotten the roof was very low and our pancakes splashed all over the roof and someone shouted, catch it, we can't lose it. And we too held our pans together. What we caught went in again. Dirt and maybe lice too. In Hill's memoir, he mentions the role of religion in the trenches. I must digress a bit to say what a curious affection the soldiers of those days had for religion. They had many compulsory church parades and got to know many hymns. Many of the soldiers also spent their time in the trenches writing. Hundreds of thousands of letters were sent home each week along with their poems, postcards for Christmas and New Year, and photographs. Unfortunately, as the war went on, most of the letters being sent and delivered were censored for fear of interception and because it was thought that a letter containing bad news could dampen morale. More than 8 million British soldiers were involved in the World War I from July 1914 until November 1918. Over 900,000 were killed in action, dying of friends, diseases or injury. In addition to that missing being presumed dead, the end of the war was declared on the 11th of November 1918. Finally, the horrible bloody war finished after four years of fighting, after four years of suffering and after four years of dying.